Okay, this is the second part of the second observation uh, before the eclipse lecture. Okay, so we were talking about the total eclipse and the annular, annular eclipse and how the annular eclipse forms a third shadow called the antumbra and is seen as a ring of sunlight, um, a solid ring of sunlight circling around the moon. <clears throat> okay, so what I want the students to do uh, is uh, take a few minutes to draw and label two types of solar eclipse as seen from Earth. Okay, so this is what we see from uh, what we see in the sky when we look up. Okay, and uh, because I already did this lecture part, uh, these are some of the responses that the students provided. <clears throat> Okay, we see here that one of the students um, provided this uh, representation of the shadows, well, the celestial bodies, the sun, moon, and earth, and the shadows that are cast on earth. Okay, on the left, on the left side, this is an annular solar eclipse, and you could tell that because uh, they put that the they didn't label the the shadows, but I didn't ask them to. <clears throat> but here, you this. The part of the little cone closest to the Earth would be the Ant Umbra. Okay, and on the right side we have a partial solar eclipse, and we can tell that because um, there's no Umbra that that they drawn in here. There's no Umbra drawn in here. So I'm assuming these two lines um, on the sides of the um, that are hitting the Earth are the range of the penumbra. <clears throat> okay, the second student here drew the moon and the sun, labeled them M and S, and uh, they forgot to label the well, which type of eclipse this is. This is a partial solar eclipse, and we can tell that because the if we see the moon off to the side um, covering part of the sun, it's a partial eclipse because the um, sun, the moon, and the earth are not in in alignment. And on the right side, we have a total eclipse, and we can tell that because the ring of sunlight that's coming around is not a solid ring. <clears throat> okay. Um, so. What we were looking for is something similar to this, where the student here drew a moon as the black uh, and the white being the sunlight that's coming or um, that's reflecting off of the off to the sides of the moon. Okay, this is a total a total solar eclipse. Okay, that's good. Okay, this second um, drawing here, we have the moon and then a solid ring of sunlight around the moon. That is what we call an annular eclipse. That is what we see in the sky. That's good. Okay, we have another partial solar eclipse, another total solar eclipse, partial and total. Okay, good. <clears throat> okay, for this next part, I wanted you guys to draw and label the parts of the shadows that are cast on Earth by the solar eclipses. Okay. If this were in the class, I'd give you give them a few minutes to do that. And <clears throat> the result was that the students provided these responses here. This is good. This is we have an umbra here is in the middle, and it's labeled umbra. And we have we have the an outer ring called the penumbra as a lighter shadow. This is similar here. We have an umbra as a dark part in the middle and a penumbra as the lighter area around the umbra. This one here, someone, uh, one of the students forgot to label uh, which part is the umbra and penumbra, but the shadow looks good. Uh, here someone drew the sun and um, the, the light uh, coming onto the earth. But we're missing the moon and labeling the shadows. <clears throat> uh, 
and this last one here, one of the students drew the moon and the shadow parts. And in this one, they put in the ant umbra, which would be what we, the shadow that would be cast by the annular eclipse. So that's good. Umbra and penumbra. Umbra and penumbra. Good. So yes, uh, so the shadows that are cast on Earth, remember they're cast uh, mainly in two parts, uh, the umbra and the penumbra. Um, with the uh, ant umbra um, during that annular eclipse, which uh, when we see the shadow cast on Earth, we don't really um, see much of a difference unless we were seeing from this, a side view, like, uh, like one of the class uh, students drew here. Uh, let me go back to uh, let's see. All right here, the side view. <clears throat> last thing I want you guys to do is go ahead and answer this question. In what moon phase do solar eclipses occur? In what moon phase or what position of the moon do you think solar eclipses occur? Okay, the options here are full moon, uh, new moon, quarter, first quarter, sorry, and one in gibbous. Okay, and take a minute to answer that. and the answers that the students um, provided. Uh, four answered a full moon and 17 answered new moon. And the answer that we were looking for is the new moon. <clears throat> so remember that a solar eclipse occurs during a new moon when the side facing away from us, away from Earth, is exposed to the sunlight. So because of that, we don't see any sunlight that's being exposed on our side that's facing um, the Earth. Um, so instead, we see a black shadow covering the sun. Okay. And that's all what we have today, because uh, we, we will begin with lunar eclipses um, during the next topic, um, during the next lesson. Okay. Uh, one thing I want you guys to think about before the next lesson is uh, what do you think a lunar eclipse is? We know what a solar eclipse is where the light from the sun is um, being blocked by the moon and now I want you guys to think what a lunar eclipse would be okay and in what position or what moon phase do you think that the lunar eclipse occurs okay thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys during the next lesson thank you Mr. Goldberg